Hey guys, my name is Tensor. Welcome to the Redux tutorial part three. Today we'll be looking at what are called typed middleware, typed reducers, and we'll also be looking at combined reducers. And we'll be adding a few other items to our application to sort of finish it off. To start off, let's start with our model as we do with almost every project. So essentially what I want to add to this application is the ability for a user to check one of the items inside of our list. And the reason why I want to add this to our application is to show you how easy it is to iterate on something that uses the Redux pattern. We'll create a new field called completed, which will be a Boolean. And then inside of the item constructor, we'll just add this.completed and we'll set it equal to false by default. That way when a user creates an item, it's automatically set to false. We also want to add the completed field to our copy with function so that we can properly change the state when we want to create a new item. And finally, let's go ahead and add completed to both of our JSON functions. Now before we move on, I want to show you guys something really cool. So if you remember yesterday, we were messing around with the Redux dev tools inside of Flutter, and you probably noticed that when we were looking at what our state looked like, it showed us the instance of our app state object. We can create these two string methods and override them inside of our objects here, and this will allow us to pass back a string representation inside of those fields, so that when we actually look at the state inside of the Redux dev tools, we'll be able to see how the state is changing as a string. The easiest way to actually make our toString method work properly is to just call to JSON, which already creates a JSON representation as a map, and then convert that map into a string. And of course, we also want to override the toString method inside of our app state class as well. And again, we'll call to JSON with toString on it. Now that we're finished with our model, we can add an action to our application. And this action will then expose the item that the user has selected so that we can properly parse that the user has checked the item. Our new action will be called item completed action. We'll pass in the item as I mentioned before, and then of course pass it through the constructor. And with that, we've completed our actions and our model for this application. Before we go ahead and add the checkbox to our user interface and our view model, as well as add a reducer for it, let's go into our middleware and refactor it so that we can use what are called typed middleware. This typed middleware is pretty useful because it allows us to essentially take the concerns of our middleware and tie them to individual pieces of middleware and then chain all of this middleware together. The advantages of this are that it makes our middleware much more readable and it makes it easier for us to refactor and add to our middleware if and when we want to. If we look at our app state middleware as it currently is, we've got four pieces of state that this middleware can go through. We've got our add item action middleware, our remove item action middleware, and remove items action middleware. And while they all do the same thing, as in they call to save to prefs, all three of them are technically individual states inside of our middleware. And of course, our get items action is its own state inside of our middleware as well. To refactor all of this, we're going to create two functions which return middleware closures. So we're going to use the middleware type which comes from the Redux library which we've already imported in here before. And we're going to create these two items which take in the app state and then return these middleware closures of type app state inside of them. Let's start with the loaded from preferences function. You can see we're returning the function signature of our normal middleware, which just takes in the store, an action, and the next dispatcher. And inside of this closure, we're calling next with the action inside of it, and then we're calling load from preferences, and then doing the same stuff that we were doing before, where we're dispatching this loaded items action out to our reducer. And when we do the same thing for our save to preferences function, you can see it's basically what we were doing inside of our middleware, except now it's isolated to this particular function. Now we want to rewrite our app state middleware function and have it return a list of middleware type with app state inside of it. This way we're returning a list of middleware functions 
which are tied to the middleware dispatcher actions. And of course, to do this, I went down to the bottom and I removed our app state middleware function so that we could rewrite it up here. To make things easier on ourselves, let's call our load from prefs with state inside of it and then save from prefs with state inside of it first, and then assign them to two final fields inside of this piece of middleware. And then we're going to return our list of middleware, and we can use this typed middleware type to create the middleware by binding these functions to our actions. So for instance, we can take our add item action and call to this save items field here. And just like before, this will initiate our save items inside of our shared preferences when the UI calls the add item action. Let's also do the same thing for remove item action and remove items action. And then finally, we can add our get items action typed middleware to this list. This does clean things up, and especially if you're working with a much larger application that has many more pieces of middleware, it's actually much easier to write it this way, and it gets rid of a lot of the boilerplate that you saw from before. You may have noticed that inside of our main.dart file, we're now getting an error from our middleware field inside of this store here. And to fix that, we just need to remove the parentheses and then pass in app state middleware as a function. There is one final thing that we do need to do to make this work properly, and that's to make sure that when our application loads up and there is no app state to be passed to our middleware, that we call our app state and create a new list with an empty set of items. We can do this by simply adding the app state to our app state middleware like this and having it call the app state constructor as a constant value with an empty list inside of it. Because we're calling to app state with constant, we also need to add the constant keyword into our model like this. You can sort of think of this as a sort of fallback. If the app state has no value inside of it when the middleware gets called, then it will automatically call to the constructor and set it as a empty set of items like this. All right, so now let's clean up our app state reducer with the combined reducer and the typed reducers. To make this work properly, we need to import Redux so that we have access to the typed reducer and the combined reducer types. And for now, what I'm going to do is just comment out our items reducer here so that we can reuse some of the logic that's inside of this reducer. Our new item reducer is going to look something like this. So we have this reducer type, which we're going to wrap our list of items inside of. And then we're going to call it item reducer and set it equal to combined reducers with a list of item inside of it. And then we're going to have a list of our reducers inside of this, which will allow us to combine them into one single monolithic reducer function. First, we want to make each of our reducers modular. So whereas before we were calling these if statements inside of our item reducer, Instead, we're specifically throwing in the action that is tied to the reducer itself. So I've created a function here called add item reducer, which takes in the action add item action, and then it performs the logic that was inside of this if statement from before. We can, of course, do the same for our remove item reducer. So again, this is the same logic that we had in our other reducer from before. We've just split it off into its own function. And we've also done the same for remove items action and loaded items action. Now, like we did with our middleware, we're able to bind the specific actions to these functions. So up in our item reducer, we can use the combined reducer function here to take all of these type reducers that we've created and then combine them into a single reducer and pass it up into our app state reducer. So again, this is all about cutting down boilerplate and making our code much more readable and modular. To demonstrate how modular this is, let's create a new reducer for our new action, which is the item completed action. Like with all of our other reducers, it takes in a list of items and then the action itself, and then it returns a list of item 
The logic for this is actually not that difficult. We just want to iterate through the current items list, map over them with this simple function, where we just check to see if item.id is equal to the action item.id, so the item that we want to have checked. And if it is, then we take that item and we want to copy all of the attributes aside from the completed attribute and then invert the completed boolean on this item and then pass it back into the list. And if it isn't, then we just pass back a normal item. Now we can come up into our item reducer and add the items completed reducer to our typed reducer list. Now that we have all of our logic finished, let's go into our user interface, add the checkbox, and add the logic which will allow the user to check the checkbox. For this, we want to come down to our item list widget where we're creating list tiles for each of our to-dos, and we want to add a trailing field, which is just a checkbox. The value of this checkbox is just item.completed, and then we've got this onChange function, which we want to deploy our action to our reducer. Let's go down to our view model now, and we're going to add a new field to the view model called onCompleted, which is a function that takes in an item. We of course need to add this to the constructor, and then we want to actually create the function inside of our viewmodel.createFactory. Like with the other functions before this, this function will just call store dispatch with the action that we want to dispatch to our reducer, and then we'll just pass in the item that's being passed in here. Finally, we need to go down to where we're returning the view model and add it to the constructor here. So onCompleted is now underscore onCompleted. Now if we go back up to our checkbox, we can add to the onChanged function model.onCompleted and pass in the item. And that's it for our application. So now let's open it up inside of our emulator and take a look at it. And here's our application. You can see it's really no different than what we had before. If we add an item, you can see we now have a checkbox, and now I can click on the checkbox and it will actually check it. If I open up the Redux Time Travel Debugger, you can now see what the state of our items actually looks like. So we've got our list of items where we've only got the one item inside of it, and we've got ID of 1, Body of Item 1, and Completed of True. If we uncheck the box and we reopen up the Time Traveler, you can see it now says completed equals false. And it says that the last action was item completed action. We can of course go forward and backwards in time and see the application of these actions to our item. Let's add a few items to our application and then force it to restart to see that it's still pulling our items from shared preferences. So now I've hit Control F5 and you can see the items have come back as they were before. And if I open this up, you can see that the last actions that were applied were first the DevTools action, the Get Items action, and then finally the Loaded Items action, which are the set of actions that go through our middleware and bring the items from shared preferences. All right, guys, well, I hope you enjoyed this tutorial. If you did, feel free to like and subscribe. If you have any questions or comments, feel free to leave them in the box below. And if you just like this tutorial, then by all means, downvote it as much as you like. Have a good night.